Let's keep on going and walk on down here underneath the leafless oaks and peek in to the newlywed's love nest here, the former Ms. Morales and her brand new husband, Mr. Ramirez. Ms. Morales, a naturalized citizen from Manila and an instructor of English for some 24 years, possesses a fierce dedication to the language only someone who has learned it from Pandybat nuns and Shakespeare can possess. In truth, it is a commonplace that the best speakers of English are those to whom it has come secondhand from far better schools than will ever occur within our lifetimes in the United States. To our miserly system, Ms. Morales adds her might of dedication and a bit of genuine erudition, year in, year out, often paying for supplies out of her own pocketbook of moths and old coins, when the district lapses in its responsibilities, as it seems likely to do again should the upcoming elections fail to pass a certain initiative. Ms. Morales was crossing Santa Clara Avenue near the mini-cinema they put into the old mortuary with an armload of student papers rewritten carefully by those students of Emily Dickinson who had lost their works previously in a rather unfortunate accident when a car nearly ran her down in the crosswalk, a common occurrence on the island. It was Mr. Ramirez who helped rescue most of the scattered student papers while the rest went flying up into the sky, and from that meeting, the relationship blossomed. Now we see the two together and what a year can bring as they ready to go out to the big New Year's party. It does seem that the former Ms. Morales has a special glow about her this evening, and one wonders, well, we shall see what another year shall bring. As for those remaining essays, well, they floated high above the trees, caught on the wind, and were dispersed to all directions. Some wound up in the estuary, where a robotic arm extending from an Iranian submarine seized some of these before gliding out undetected through the Golden Gate. The Iranian secret authority remains puzzled by Emily Dickinson, and many translators have been set to work on the project within the Hall of Exemplary and August Revolutions. The AIS Shadur, that is to say the al Islamic Service U-Boat, has been tracking the curious goings-on here at the port in our curious island for several years under the command of Captain Rashid, and this evening he is observing with some curiosity the goings-on and the celebrations the turn of our infidel new year. The Shador was dispatched by the infamous Revolutionary Guard to keep an eye on this region of the American Empire with all of its vital shipping and military activities. As the years passed, Captain Rashid's reports have gotten less and less feedback from home, and the speculation has grown among the crew that their mission has long since been either entirely forgotten or pushed to the lowest levels of priority within the intelligence agency of Iran. The last message to Captain Rashid from Tehran was cryptic, maddening, inconclusive, and lacking any hint of how he was to proceed, typical of secret intelligence agencies everywhere. It went as follows. What means I heard a fly buzz? Discovery is fatal. Remain circumspect among the Fellaheen of America. Be prepared for further developments. As always, the vision of the Prophet must not be cross-eyed. At the end of each mission, the Shadur glides out of the estuary and through the Golden Gate, running silent, running deep.
Shall we peek in on Denby, who, living a monastic life as he does, tonight has three fine ladies there to keep him company. There is Madame Ibanez. And there is Ms. Tacoma. And there is Senorita Montoya. We have tried and tried to obtain a certain Mr. Tom Keith to provide sound effects and a certain Pat Donahue to supply music. However, Mr. Keith simply hopped into his Lamborghini and drove away without speaking to any of us. And Mr. Donahue broke into such a fit of giggles when our agent told him what we were willing to pay that he fell down, persuading his manager to believe his client had suffered a petit mal seizure, and so that worthy slammed the door in our faces before calling the police. So, we are left with Denby who, although a rank beginner, is diligently practicing each day so as to be able to perform at the notable venue located at 16th and Mission Streets in the city, and 24th and Mission, and the Civic Center, and the Embarcadero, and Fisherman's Wharf next to the boy painted copper standing on the orange crate. Denby has high expectations. Denby came to the island over a decade ago while he still had a job, and the Navy still was here, and nobody really wanted to live here because we have never been very exciting people on the island as we have in Oak Town, nor have we gone much for flamboyance like over in the city. And we are modest in our aspirations and in our politics, preferring sanity and reasonableness, unlike Berkeley. Hard times came with the reign of the bushes, and so Denby found a small room in the lunatic asylum that sits behind Pagano's hardware store. There he works on compositions for island life and practices with his band the Monkey Spankers and helps out with the catatonics and the hypochondriacs. Thank you.